Hey guys, what's up? Spencer here. In the previous video, we went over what the back end of a logistic regression looks like. And so in this video, we'll be going over how to actually use the logistic regression function in R. So let's get right down to it. So let's get down to creating a logistic regression model in R. So first, uh, what I want to do is just, I just want to attach my data set, the crime, so I don't have to reference uh, what the columns will be inside of this particular data set. And let's not forget to detach our data sets when we are done. So once we attached it, okay, it was already attached, so that's good. Uh, let us actually create the model. So let's do log mod. Uh, we will be using the GLM function, which stands for Generalized Linear Modeling, a uh, linear model function. Uh, and the syntax is pretty much the exact same as that of a linear regression type function or the LM. So we will just be plugging in our target, which we want to predict, uh, tilde all of our X values. And we just want to reference where that data came from. So data is equal to crime data. And let's run that. And let's take a look at a general summary of our log mod. And this is what we what it looks like. As we see here, these three metrics over here are actually very important. The null deviance is essentially how well your model fits the data just using its intercept. Our residual deviance includes all of our independent variables as well. In general, all of our numbers here, you want them to be as low as possible, which indicates a goodness of fit. The AIC will generally be used uh, to compare this model with other models that we'll be creating later down the road. So let's take a further look at what our data or our log model has in store for us. So as we can see here, Many of our variables are not significant at all. Uh, so in general, we would probably want to remove uh, those specific variables as they don't provide any, uh, any much value to our overall model. So let's start slicing away at what our model uh, has in store for us so that we can potentially improve or lower our AIC value, residual deviance, and our null deviance type values. So let's create another log model, GLM targets tilde, and then dot, or our period. But now we want to start slicing away what type of variables that we have. So I guess we can start off with RM. Uh, that's, just, that's just the first one that came uh, to my eyeballs. But once we remove our RM variable, Let's include that. Let's take a look at our log mod again, see if there is an improvement. Uh, 250, so it is lower than what we have here. There's 116, 116, so that was the same. 43.972, and this is 44. So in general, since the AIC was overall lower, uh, I would go with that score, and we have a better like an overall better uh, description on what our uh, model has compared with the other ones. Uh, let's take another look at it. Uh, let's try to remove another variable, uh, see what else it has in store for us. So let's remove Chaz. So log mod two, we do the exact same thing, GLM target and response. Uh, let's remove the Chaz and also the RM. And let's reference our data again, crime data, log mod two, and let's do a summary, log mod two, 248, 250, a lot lower, 44, uh, it's pretty much the same, 116, pretty much the same. So uh, since this was largely changed, the AIC uh, from our previous log mod, uh, right here, a log mod one, uh, we'll go with this. And so instead of manually typing out or going back and forth on what our models could be like minimized to, uh, there's a really sweet function called step AIC just based on this particular value, whichever value is lower, that is the model that we'll be using. So there's a few libraries 
I want to import. I love the dplyr function. Uh, it's very, very efficient in, in terms of its functions or functionality use. And we will want to uh, import the mass function for the step AIC value. So let us run our model. So model, uh, we just do the same thing, glm. We want to predict our targets. Uh, let's start with uh, what we have earlier. So let's get the chaz. Let's put a comma. No, no comma. Chaz and rm over here. Let's reference the data. Let's go to crime data. Now for their dplyr function, this is essentially a pipe where we will be passing in our entire model. We'll be passing that into a different type of function called step AIC. And then we just want to call this trace is equal to true. So we can take a look at what our steps look like. So this is what our model has been going through in terms of all of its AIC values. Uh, it takes a look at all of our independent variables and it just starts slicing away at the variables that are not uh, important to our overall model. And it judges this based on our AIC values. So we had 248.81, 247.25, 245.96, 2 and it keeps on decreasing the more we start slicing away so that we can have a more robust model that only includes the features that are most important. So it looks like this is our final model with an AIC value of 242.39. And these are all of our variables that are still included into the model. So let us do a summary on our model. And it seems like this is, this is all that we have left in terms of our variables. Also, take into note that this p-ratio, even though it's not significant to the overall model, it's still actually included in this overall model, uh, partly because maybe if we were to take out this p-t ratio, our AIC value would actually increase. So that's why this p-t ratio is still included in our model. So once we created a general model in terms of what our sets will look like, let's get into the prediction phase. So let's make some room. Uh, what we want to do is to create a training, training and testing sets, uh, 8020, uh, where 80% of our observations will be falling under training and our 20% 20 20 of our data will be falling under our testing set. Now that we actually have a model that we are working with uh, in terms of uh, minimized AIC value, let us start splitting our data into an 80-20 set where 80% of our data falls under the training and 20% falls under the testing. So I already pre-wrote some code so that it can do the split for us. Over here, let's copy and paste that. So our train is zero to 80%. Uh, so it's essentially getting the zeroth value all the way up to 80% of the length of our dimension of crime data. Let's take a look at that. Summary of our train, or not summary. Uh, let's take a look at the dimensions, dimension of train, 373. And let's do the same thing for test, where let's do a dimension of, oh, uh, actually let's do tail. No, head of test where it can picks off on 374 so our training and so all our training and testing is split into two different sets on and we make sure that all of our data are split evenly uh, well not evenly they're split so that they are continuous and they just follow they follow each other um, on that specific index. So once we actually have our training and testing, let us recreate the model. Let's call this model final. Uh, we do the GLM. We want to pass in our training of our target. We do tilde. And then we want to make sure we are referencing the correct data sets. Now we want to pass in our step AIC. And let's do the trace is equal to true. And let's run that cannot do that. Oh, that's right, because I need to import my packages over here. And let's run that. Cannot find that. 
Huh. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, there we go. I had my my pipe was incorrectly formatted. Uh, but anyways, once we have our AIC values, uh, notice that this was a lot lower than 240. The only reason why this is lower is probably because we used a subset of the actual data in order to get a lower AIC score. But anyways, and also our PT ratio was out, so that might be playing a huge factor from previously. Uh, but anyways, once we have our model final that's cleaned, we want to do our prediction. So ypred, we use a predict function where we essentially just pass in our model final. And what it's doing here is that it's extracting its coefficients and it's plugging, it's plugging in all of our attributes inside of our test and comparing that. Uh, well, it will be compare. We'll be comparing the test value uh, later on. But once our once we get our y pred, all of our values here are the predicted values on our given observations of our test. So actually, let's take a look at that test. Let's view test on where our values are here. So. Uh, our model predicted that our first observation, 374, is it's 0.22, and that's close to zero. We have a 1.07, which is close to one, 1 1.09, close to one, etc. Uh, you can take a look further. The zero negative uh, 0 0.02, that's 378, that's close to zero. So these are relatively close to the actual target value. And let's get a more solid understanding on how to bring everything down to one number. And we will do that via a mean squared error uh, function. And conveniently, I already wrote that out where we want to find our mean squared error. We are, we are essentially summing the square of the subtraction y prediction minus your target. And you want to divide that by the length of your y predicted model. And so our model here has an 8.9% uh, value for MSE. Now that's pretty good. I have to say so myself. Uh, let's look at the summary of the model, model final. And we have an AIC of 204 and everything in general is just lower than what we have seen prior. So let us compare this with a base model where we are essentially using the same data set um, and we just want to use this as the base. We'll just do this as base. We are not going to be stepping through based on AIC. We run that, we create a base model just based on its uh, raw variables or raw features without slicing. Let's get the Y prediction of the base and we want to predict the same model, model base, and we want to pass in the test model base. Oh, it's capital model base. Run that, and then we want to calculate the mean squared error of the base. Let's call this base, and we want to replace y preds with the y pred base, MSE base, MSE base. Notice well, it's very interesting. Notice that it's 8.77 percent which is very intriguing because if we were to take a look, because it's actually more more accurate in terms of predictions than our uh, hyper-tuned model. But let's do a summary on our model base and take a look. So we have an AIC value of 218 and let's compare that to our tuned model of 204. So I have to conclude here that even though the predictions of our model base are a little slightly more accurate, our model final is more robust. So in terms of if we have additional data that we potentially plug into here, this model, even though it's a little less accurate by 0.02% uh, or 0 0.02, uh, I'll probably still stick with this logistic model that I created here with all of its hyper tuning and just these variables. Uh, this, the base model might be overfitting or it just might be, you know, in terms of efficiency, uh, if we're working with huge, huge amounts of data, it will take a very long, long, long time to actually run that model. Whew, all right, well, that was a little bit long, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video on logistic regression. 
If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments. And also, please remember to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.